Hello everybody, welcome to episode 5 of the CSGO multi-hack series. In this episode we're going to be making a FOV changer for CSGO. This is pretty dope, you can both increment and decrement your FOV value. And this is a really simple one to make, but it's awesome. Now if you're new to this series, every week I upload a new video where we add a new thing to our CSGO multi-hack. At the end of the series we're going to combine this all into one massive cheat where I show you how to make it and keep it back undetected and all of that good stuff. So if you're new to this series, go check out the playlist down in the description. Anyways, let's get into it. Before getting to coding, I would highly recommend disabling Valve Anti-Cheat back just to develop safely because you don't know what's going to happen. It'd even be best to just make a second Steam account uh, since CSGO is free just to test on and all of that. Alright, so for our IDE, we're going to be using Visual Studio Community. I'm on Community 2017, but Community 2019 is out. There really is no difference between the two versions, or no, nothing that's too notable. So, just download 2019 if you don't already have it, but if you're on 2017, that's alright. Come over to File, New, and click Project, and do C++, Visual C++, and select Empty Project. Make sure you do Empty Project. A lot of you do Windows Console Application, and this leads to problems down the line. Alright, we're just going to name this FOVYT and we'll hit OK and keep in mind this location that it's built at because this is where the EXE is going to be and all that good stuff. Oh, I already have a file named that from a previous video so we'll just name this YouTube with two E's. Alright, so nothing will be here. Come over to source files, right click, hover over add and do new item and make sure you select a .cpp and I'll just name this main.cpp just to keep the continuity of the file names that I have in all my videos. And again, all the code for this will be on GitHub. So first things first, we have three preprocessor directives, IO stream, and windows.h, and t1help32. Windows.h is used for a lot of the reprocess memory, write process memory, and functions like that. t1help32 is a function that we're gonna use for some things we'll reference in a function called get module base address that we'll define later. We'll actually create the whole entire function. And right here we have our address and offset. There's literally only gonna be two of these for this video. This is going to be pretty simple just for the whole FOV thing and you can get these on Haze Dumper. Now Haze Dumper does sometimes take some time to update and the only one you're going to need to update is this one. This one will always stay the same. So do control F, find it and it's right here. But this one is actually out of date because Haze Dumper has not updated yet because the game recently updated. But I dumped the game myself and here's the current address. Now this is going to be different especially if you watch this a week, a month, or a year later. You'll need to go to Haze Dumper and make sure you update these. Now next actually let's declare some global variables. We have four of these. You went pointer underscore t. We use that because it can be used for both x86 and x64 architecture. And we'll store the module base in that. dword proc id. This is where we'll store our process id. Proc process id, pid, all the same thing. It's just a list of numbers usually like three or so numbers that identify the ID of the game or the process pretty simple HWND will store the window in this and then a handle to from our application to the game that we plan to read and write memory to and then while we're at this make sure you have this set to x86 because we want this to match the architecture of CSGO because CSGO is 32-bit and also come over here right click on the project go to properties and you want to change the character set to multibyte, just make sure it is, else you'll encounter some errors. Uh, this, if you're on 2019, it'll be in a little advanced tab, there'll th be a thing that says advanced. So just make sure you select that, and it'll still be there, just obviously make sure this is. I see a lot of you had that error, because you guys aren't doing that. So next, I'm going to paste in this function. Again, you can paste this yourself, or you can type it out. It really doesn't make a difference. This is a git module base address function. We put in a module, and it gives us the base address of it. This is a pretty nice function. I use it in almost all my videos. And the next thing is three of these templates, or two two templates, I'm sorry, RPM and WPM, which stands for respectively read process memory and write process memory. These templates just making using these functions much easier, and it simplifies the whole thing for us. Okay, so we're going to do void main because we don't want this to actually return a value. And there's gonna be no parameters in that. So here we are going to define all the things we declared earlier. So hwnd is equal to find window a. So that's the function we're gonna be using. And then for this parameter is gonna take the first one, we're gonna put a null. And the second one, this is gonna be a string, so do quotations. And you wanna make sure you spell this exactly the same. This is the window name of CSGO. If you see right here, I hover over this, it says Counter-Strike Global Offensive. All right, now that we have that, we can use the function get window thread process ID. In this first parameter, we're actually gonna put in the window. And then the next one, we're gonna do a reference to the process ID, so and proc ID. Now here, we'll define the module base like this. And we'll use the function that we actually pasted in earlier. So get module base address. And the parameters this takes is simply a string for the name so the module in CSGO that we want to look at is client underscore panorama dot DLL again make sure you spell this exactly the same uh, else you'll have errors 
Next thing is our handle. So our handle, we'll call this H process. We do that so it can match the name that we put in the template right here. So that does need to be the same. And we'll use the open process function. And in this, we're going to give ourselves process underscore all underscore access. This means we have the ability to both read and write memory. So we define it as both of those two. This middle value, it's going to be null. And then finally, we're going to put in the proc ID. So we're specifying which uh, process we want to have access to. And then we'll do int fov equals 90. So we'll just make a storage type for our FOV. So while we're going to do a while loop exclamation point get async key state. So the exclamation points means as long as we don't press that key and we'll specify this as VK underscore end. So the end key is going to be how we exit out of this application. And we actually don't want to have and one right there. That doesn't matter. We'll use that later though. Okay, so let's start using our, let's start reading and writing memory. So you int pointer underscore T and we'll call this local player. And here we're going to use the RPM template and the type this is going to be is going to be a uint pointer underscore T. Now we're going to specify this as module base plus DW entity list. Module base, we define this right here. And then DW entity list, we define this up here. This is the same thing as doing this and hard coding in it, but we like to do defines because especially when we start getting big, big projects, it makes everything look much better. All right, this next one is going to be int and we're going to call this I F O V. And again, we're going to do RPM this type this time though, it's going to be an int and it's going to be local player plus, and here we're going to add right here, this value. So here we're going to do a console output. So standard C out console output. And we'll call this FOV or we'll just put a little descriptor right there and then we'll output the value of IFOV and then we'll end the line and L. Okay, so here is where we're going to control our FOV where we want to increase it and decrease it. So we'll do an if right here. If get async key state and we're going to put in a key we want. So for this it's going to be zero uh, hexadecimal value of 76 zero X means it's a hexadecimal identifier. And what this key is right here is the the F7. You can find these keys yourself. Uh, just search up like virtual key table and they have the, the identifiers and all that. And then right here, we're gonna add an and one because if we like press it once, it's gonna run that through a lot. So this and one makes it for each key press instead of each time we hold it down. You can see what I mean if you take this out and experiment with it, it'll be really crazy if you don't have that in there. So this first one, we'll set this to, to subtract. So we'll put in minus right here as a little note. And then all this is gonna do, it's gonna do FOV minus one. And I spelled that wrong. So we'll do WPM, write process memory template and int. And this is gonna be again, local player plus this and we're going to set this to the value of fov so comma fov so this is going to overwrite that value to be whatever fov is all right and for the sake of time we're going to copy this like this and change this to 77 and now this is going to be the key f8 and we want this to increment our value so we'll change that note to add and simply put this as plus one and then finally we want a way to set our fov back to the normal value so we'll change this to 78 and this will be the f9 key on the keyboard and we can set this to 90 and boom, this code is done. All the code for this will be on the GitHub. And do keep in mind, if you're gonna build this, come over to release, and this might actually change the multibyte type, so you might have to come back to, to properties and make sure this is still multibyte. This should always be x86, but you can come over here to build, click build solution, and if there is no errors, you shouldn't have any errors if you follow along correctly. You wanna go to this location, and that's where the .exe is gonna be built, and just run that. But since my computer is already an admin, I can simply do the local Windows debugger. So I'm gonna load up in a bots game just to demonstrate this. All right, so I'll come over here, run it. And if the thing does output like a random value, right now it's outputting 9090, which is correct. But if it outputs like a crazy, like big integer or something like that, that means that your address is out of date. So you need to update the DW entity list address. Again, you can dump these values yourself or just rely on the haze dumper GitHub. But the haze dumper GitHub does take a day or two sometimes. So let's actually press the F8 key. And here you can see each time I press it, my FOV increases. So you get to some crazy high values and it's really fun to mess around with. You can also go down into lower values. So right here we're getting so far that it's starting to get out of the screen view. If you have any issues with this, feel free to join the Discord server down in the description and the community there would be glad to help you out. These videos do take a lot of time to make, so it'd be awesome if you could like this video and subscribe if you want to see more of this CSGO type stuff because I'm going to be uploading these videos for quite some time. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed.